Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How are you doing today? Amen. This may be the only time you ever see such a spectacle. <laughs> but I hope not. I hope not. I hope that each and every one of you come to the point where you are receiving your diplomas and uh, in biblical studies. Uh, I remember uh, when we started, 1986, when Bishop started the school, and um, I started then. And it was not until 1998 that I received my doctorate of theology. So it took me 12 years to do it. But how many of you know, if you don't do that, you'll just be 12 years older. But if you go through the school, you'll be 12 years older, and you'll have something to show for it. Amen? So I encourage all of you to uh, get involved in our Christian Life School of Theology. It is a powerful uh, tool for ministry. And uh, so this morning, uh, what we want to do is we just want to share with you the achievement of two of our uh, young uh, leaders and workers here in the church. And uh, this is a big day for them, and I want you to make it a special and a big day for them as well. Will you do that? Amen. I have a special presentation that I want to give that uh, nobody was aware or knew that I was uh, that w that we were going to do this morning. But uh, I contacted our president, President Randall Langley, uh, from Columbus, Georgia, and I asked him if he would uh, uh, just have some words of encouragement for our students and for our entire Victory Bible Training Center. And uh, so, if you have that video available and ready, we would like to see that and hear from our president. Greetings, Pastor Paul Freeman and the Victory Bible Training Center family. This is Dr. Langley, CLST Global President, and I just want to send out a big congratulations to Sean Gunther and Jason Lewis for the accomplishment of earning their Associate of Theology degrees. Great job! We all know that our world is in desperate need of Christian leaders, and we're very proud to partner with all of you students at Victory Bible Training Center as you invest in your personal growth and development as kingdom leaders. Keep up the great work and congratulations again to Sean and Jason. God bless. Amen. That was just for you guys this morning. Amen. In order to receive a degree, there are many uh, things that you have to do. Uh, obviously, the study, the books, and all of those things. But you have to immerse yourself in whatever the subject is for that particular uh, course of study. Each course of study is worth three college credit hours. And so what has happened here is these uh, gentlemen, they have gone through 20, 20. Have you thought about how many you've gone through? 20 of these particular uh, college courses. I could go through the list. Um, Dr. Mark Rutland is a part of the faculty, Dr. Ron Cottle, Dr. Lusk, Dr. Freeman. There's, there's about, what, 80, I don't know the total number, 80 some odd, close, between 80 and 100 faculty members. Uh, and we travel the world and uh, we have videos of all of our courses. And, and I'm sure that Bishop is going to mention it this morning, but we have s some graduated students in our auditorium this morning from the Ukraine, from our school in Ukraine. And I'm going to give, go ahead, amen. Praise the Lord. Pasha and Igor and Saveta, we love these people. They have been such a huge part of our lives. And, and uh, what you don't realize is whenever we tell you that you are, whenever you give, you're giving part of your finances to help uh, finance the gospel in other, other parts of the world, here are three people whose lives have been impacted because of your generosity and your faithfulness in this house. And I want to say personally, thank you. Without me saying anything else, I'm going to turn this over to uh, Dr. Dwayne Lusk and let him, he has a few remarks he wants to make this morning as well. So, Thank you, Dr. Freeman. <laughs> I don't do that very often, but it felt pretty good saying that. Um, you know, uh, to, to see uh, the development and transformation in his life over the years, not just uh, in the stages of ministry, but also uh, my son-in-law and uh, uh, your pastor, 
my pastor, uh, thank God for him. To all the students who are attending Christian Life School of Theology now, I just want to say thank you. And um, your day is coming to be a part of this. To Sean and Jason, I say congratulations, my friends, on your dedication and your commitment to higher education and biblical learning. Uh, 1983, I met Dr. Cottle uh, for the first time, and uh, he was sharing with me in my office the concept of a college without walls uh, in which the professor comes into the local schools, uh, ministers, and the students stay within the local school working under the authority of the pastor and growing and developing uh, inside their local congregation instead of going off somewhere to school and getting their degrees or whatever they do and never coming back. Um, And so this concept has literally changed the environment of churches all over the world. Um, We started our first school in 1956. No, not 56. (laughs) That was, that wasn't 86. What? (laughs) Yeah. Well, you know, I'm getting older. (laughs) But 1986, we began our first school and and, uh, began the process of graduating uh, students from our local congregation. Uh, And then in 1992, we began. In College Without Walls, Christian Life School of Theology in the Ukraine uh, as our first endeavor outside uh, U.S. confines. Um, we, we had the vision to do that. Dr. Cottle backed us in doing that. And, um, and uh, now CLST is in over 30 countries of the world. Uh, we have a- students actually pastoring churches uh, just from the Ukraine school alone Uh, probably in 12, 13, maybe more than that, uh, countries right now. Uh, Just take a moment. uh, I'd like for Sveta, would you stand? And and, uh, let's uh, let everybody get a good look at you. This is our dean. And next to her uh, is uh, Igor. Uh, Igor is our rector. Uh, I, I, I call him the boss when I'm over there. I'm under his authority. He's always calling me boss, but... He's boss when I'm there. And then, of course, over here we've got uh, Paul, Paul uh, Pasha. Um, and uh, this is uh, Pastor Anatoly Gavriluk's son. Uh, Pastor Anatoly is where we began the school in 1992, and he's been faithful uh, to help us and assist us in the establishment of that school there. So uh, basically, those of you who are students, you all may be seated. Thank you. Uh, those of you who are students of Christian Life School of Theology and you come here and you see 10 or 15 students that's taking courses, you just have to know you're a part of something much bigger than what you see in this visual concept of this particular church. On any given uh, week, uh, there's literally thousands of students taking courses around the world from CLST. So uh, again, we want to encourage you, uh, you're never too, too, too old to start school. Um, I can remember uh, Dr. Freeman up in Tennessee. I was teaching courses, and um, uh, after the, after the, the last course, a gentleman came up, 81 years of age. I was the final course uh, for him to complete for his doctorate degree, uh, doctorate in theology. And I, I asked him the question. I said, you're 81 years old. Why in the world did you decide at least 70 or 71 to start the Bible school and get a degree. And he looked at me and he beamed and he had a few teeth missing. But an intelligent uh, individual, he said, I never had an opportunity to go to school. And when this opportunity arose, I love the Bible. I love God. I love his word. And I just wanted to learn more about the word of God. And so I started the school. Never thought I would live to receive my doctorate degree. But uh, in his big smile, he said, you know, Now the pastor has told me uh, that he's made a special place for me to start teaching. And he said, uh, I'm going to have a special class of senior citizens, and I'm going to get to teach them some of the things I have learned in these last 10 years. So um, ministry is a great opportunity. You know, when somebody first asked me, 
about a degree. I had no desire uh, to, to, get, to get a degree in biblical studies. I mean, that wasn't my goal. It wasn't my vision. I can remember Dr. Cottle looking at me, and he said, it's not about you. It's about what God can do with you if you pursue the higher levels of education. He said, you want God's will in your life. Don't hinder what God can do by restricting your education. And um, that was the catalyst that put me on this journey. And when I received my doctorate degree, uh, the very first time, it was amazing, opportunities opened to me because I had a doctorate degree that would have never opened to me any other way. And especially in other countries of the world, uh, that has happened. So uh, I can tell you, uh, I've even, I, I, I still take courses occasionally. Uh, when I look at it and I see a new teacher, I want to learn more. I want to learn something every day. So it's not just about the degree. It's about learning more about God's Word so that God can use me more in the ministry that He has wherever I go. So again, congratulations not only to you two, but to all the students that are participating now. And I just want to encourage you, if you haven't started, the next school is a good time to start. And as pastor said, you say, well, I'll be, I'll be 30 or I'll be 40 or I'll, in 10 years, you know, when I get my degree. Well, you're going to be that age without it in the same number of years, so you might as well have your degree. God bless you, Pastor uh, and Dr. Freeman. Thank you for the opportunity to share today. Amen. Give Bishop a big hand this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. What happens a lot of times is we uh, we figure that um, you know just uh, we we go a certain amount of time to school in public education, and I went all the way through high school, and I went into secular college, just non Bible colleges, liberal arts colleges where I went initially, and uh, you figure, well, you know, that's, that's enough. Um, I had learned to study the Bible when I was a very young man, uh, sitting at my father's uh, feet uh, as a minister of the gospel. I watched him and learned from him, and then, you know, I, um, I, I knew how to study the Bible and all those things, but it's always good to have somebody to, to put you in the right direction and to, and to put you into a into a, uh, a, a set of disciplines to where you will ferret out things from the Scripture that um, you would have never seen otherwise. And one of the problems, and we learned this long ago, and, and uh, Bishop, he's, he's hands down probably the, the one who has influenced my uh, understanding of the Bible and, and uh, just the, the tenacity and the grip and the discipline of Bible study and those things, and so he, you know, he has a he has a way. If you've ever heard him teach, just in a teaching set setting, he has a way of just sharing the the word and making it simple. And that's what we need. We need we need Holy Ghost inspired, educationally and theologically accurate information. Because it's that kind of information that then can become revelation. And if we don't have that kind of, of inspired, it's, it's one thing to hear somebody sit down and say the Greek word is this, the Hebrew word is this, or many scholars say, or whatever. That, that's fine and good. But to have somebody that has it burning on the inside of them. And that's what Christian Life School of Theology is all about. In our local uh, uh, center, we call it uh, Victory Bible Training Center. But that's what the school is all about, is men and women who have a fire in their belly, a passion about the subject that they teach. And uh, so for that, I am thankful. Um, um, someone asked me uh, uh, here a while back, they said, uh, you have that school at your church, and you say you have a, a doctorate degree. Did you confer that on yourself? Absolutely not. It took me 12 years 
I've read hundreds of books. I've taken many, many courses. I have sat through the great ones and the not so great ones. <laughs> I have been bored. I have been asleep. I have been awake. I have been all of those things that you are in school. It took me 12 long years. I started to bring a table out here, Bishop, this morning and put all of my books. I have every single book, every single syllabus, every single test, every single grade, every single letter, every single commendation from a professor or the the class that I took, I have every one of them bound in binders. And if I had a table, if I was to set it on this right here, it would completely cover this up to about that high. No kidding. And and so to, I can't confer a degree on myself. For anybody that would think that, shame on them. Because that's not the case at all. Um, originally, uh, Christian Life School of Theology, uh, Dr. Cottle was... Uh, a brilliant, brilliant man, is a brilliant man, and he was the, uh, he worked for the Assemblies of God in their graduate school, and uh, he developed their college as well as their uh, postgraduate school, and uh, then when he left there, he felt as though that he needed to do something that would encourage the local church to retain their young leaders rather than send them off to some other school and let that school get the best years out of their lives. And uh, because the local church uh, it was being, it became more anemic all the time when that happens. We see that today even um, with students going to uh, uh, many colleges and many universities. The, the, it seems like in the, uh, uh, the few years that they're there, sometimes, not always, but sometimes, uh, they get uh, so overwhelmed and so uh, infiltrated with things that are non-biblical uh, non-Christian, their worldview changes, and we begin to lose them in those formative years of their lives. Now, I'm not telling you that everyone should go to Bible college and become a minister of the gospel. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is, is that everyone should involve themselves in some way in higher Christian education so that they will learn and understand. Here's the, here's the way that uh, I look at this. The Bible is very clear. It tells us in the book that there will come a day when we will be judged by this book. Go ahead and smile. We will be judged by this book. I can't change that. The Bible says so. And so I want to know what's in it. If I am going to be held accountable, come on, we need to know what it says. Amen? And so I am totally, my, my heart is, is not to be overbearing about this. My heart is to be encouraging about it. I want you to be encouraged that Bible study is a fun thing. Uh, it, it is an absolute uh, a blessing. It is an opportunity to get closer to God. And the reason is, is because our God is only as big as our knowledge of him. Let me say that again. Our God is only as big as our knowledge of him. If you think you have a little bitty God, you've got a real big problem. But if you've got a great big God, you've got a little bitty problem. Amen? So we, we need to increase our vision and our understanding and our knowledge of who God is. Because he's a great, big, wonderful God. He's always an encouraging God. He's always an optimistic God. Amen. He sees the best in us. When we don't see a thing in ourselves, our God sees the best in us. Can you say amen? Praise the Lord. He took a little shepherd boy out there on the side of those Judean hills feeding a few sheep, playing some kind of a little guitar that he had made himself, singing some songs that he had written himself just looking into nature. I could see him out there. You've heard me do it before, but I'm going to do it again. He's out there and he's got all those sheep around him. No band, no Reggie, no choir, no drummer, no lights, no frog or fog or whatever that is. And none of that stuff going on. And he's just out there and he's just worshiping God with his guitar. Bling, bling, bling. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not won't join in with me. I mean, you know, that was his choir. That was his choir. And it was just him and God. Him and God. Him and God. 
Amen. And God gave him revelation. God gave him impartation. His knowledge of God increased by the times that he worshiped and praised and dug deep into the things of God. His knowledge of God, his, his sight became larger than what it was. And he went on to lead his nation and become the greatest king that the nation of Israel had ever known simply because his knowledge and his vision of who God is increased. And Bishop is absolutely right. Why limit ourselves? Why limit ourselves and say, if I come to church and hear the preacher preach on Sunday morning, that's good enough. Church, that is not good enough. That's not good enough. Amen. You got to dig into it for yourself. We have a great, big, wonderful God, and he wants to reveal himself in a great, big, wonderful way. This morning, I want to share a few words uh, for the graduates as well as for everyone in the room. This is not a graduation message or anything like that. This is just what I felt like God said to say at Victory Church this morning. And uh, so I want to uh, I want to do this with uh, just the few remaining moments that I have here. And um, um, you know what? Uh, I want Matt and you guys to come back up here in just a moment. And I want you to play that song again, When the Oceans Rise. I love that song. That's a great song. But um, I want you to hear what the Holy Spirit would say to us this morning. If you will, if you have uh, your Bibles, and I know that you have one of some sort, whether it's on a phone or a pad or a, a book. Um, I'm going old school today. I'm going to read words out of a book. <clears throat> Deuteronomy chapter 31. Deuteronomy chapter 31. Moses went and spoke these words to all Israel, and he said to them, this is verse 1, I am 120 years old today. I can no longer go out and come in. Also, the Lord has said to me, you'll not cross over this Jordan. The Lord your God himself crosses over before you. He will destroy these nations from before you, and you shall dispossess them. Joshua himself crosses over before you, just as the Lord has said. And the Lord will do to them as he did to Sion and Og, the kings of the Amorites and their land when he destroyed them. The Lord will give them over to you that you may do to them according to every commandment which I've commanded you. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Then Moses called Joshua and said to him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and of good courage, for you must go with this people to the land which the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them, and you shall cause them to inherit it. Here's the verse of Scripture that we're going to base our message on this morning. And the Lord, He is the one who goes before you. And the Lord, He is the one is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear and do not be dismayed. Can you say praise God for his word? This morning I want to simply tell you these words. God is with you. God is with you. God is with you. Whenever we start out to do anything for God, He promises to go with us. If we ever say yes to the voice of God, whether it's to something, maybe, maybe you're attending the church here, or you may attend some other church, and a leader or a pastor asks you to do something, and you feel in your spirit or you feel in your heart, that's a good thing. I would like to do that. I want to do that, but I'm fearful. I don't know if that's what I'm supposed to do. What if that's not what God has called me to do? Well, let me let you in on a secret. In a church, you can only do what a leader says you can do. You can do other stuff, but if they didn't say it, you're on your own. Amen? 
So if somebody put, uh, points their finger as a leader and says, this is what uh, we feel like God is looking for in this place, did you know that all of a sudden God will breathe on that? God will bless that? God will, it, it, your, your gift and your talent will rise to the top just like uh, cream rising up on top of fresh milk. I'm telling you, it'll it'll come to the top. You'll be uh, you'll be excited about it. You'll be able to do it. God will give you the vision, and He'll give you the power to do it, and He'll give you the unction to do it. All of those things, but that's not all. What'll happen then is everything in your life will start fitting into place. There's more to it than just your job in a ministry or at a church. God, when you start being obedient to God, when you say yes to God, see a lot of people say, well, I was called to preach or I was called to this or I was called to that. There's nowhere in the Bible that says you were called to do any one of those things. Contrary to popular belief, that's not a specific calling. It is a general calling that says, I'm asking you to come and follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. What the it is that you do, that comes after you say yes to the one question, will you come and follow me? And if he doesn't say, uh, if he doesn't give you a specific thing immediately, don't get upset. Don't get mad. Don't get angry. Don't get hurt. Don't get, don't feel like he's put you on the shelf and, and hanging you out to dry or anything like that. No, that's not the case at all. If that's, if that's what's happening, what that means is, is God is in the process of maturing you. God is in the process of raising you up. You can't just jump into a situation and start doing it without proper preparation. I had a man come to me several years ago and he said these words and we were uh, not in this building yet. We were between buildings. And he came to me and said, I've got a word this morning for the church. I said, well, let me hear it. He said, no, I'm your elder in the Lord. And I said, no, you're not. He was almost 70 years old. Now, that sounds cocky, don't it? But, but I know my place in Christ. I said, I'm the pastor. And so if you don't tell me what it is, then you can forget it. Woo! You know how that went over? But I stuck by my guns. I stuck by my guns because the reason is, is because I have respect for God and his word. Uh, you, you supersede or go above or beyond uh, his word. You got a lot of trouble. You got a lot of problems. And I'll say this. Thank God that all of that situation worked out the way it did because I don't have any of that problem around here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Because when we follow the voice of God and hear what he says and do what he says, God does wonderful things. He increases us. And God is with you. He wants to increase you. So it says here in these verses that we read, and the Lord, he is the one who goes before you. Everybody say these words. God goes before you. Now point at the person next to you. You. Yeah. God goes before you. What does that mean? What does it mean that God goes before you? God goes before you. Whenever we start out doing something for the Lord, there's a little bit of fear and intrepidation. We wonder, what step do I take next? What step do I take? How do I make this happen? How do I make this happen? Well, you can rest assured one thing. When you start taking a few steps, God is already there because he goes before you. By the time you get there, you're late. <laughs> By the time you get to wherever it is that God wants you to go, you're already late. Amen. You're already, he's already there. He's sitting there going, hey, I've been here a while. Amen. Because God doesn't, he doesn't exist in our time restraints. He exists in eternity. Amen. So I don't care what age you are. You may think, well, I'm too old to do a Bible school or I'm too old to do a certain ministry. I'm too old to do this, that, or the other. No, just get involved. One of the worst things that we can do is sit around and do nothing. That makes us, uh, that makes our muscles all, you know, a person that is restrained and restricted and has very little movement, their muscles, uh, uh, they, they shrivel up and die and become small and they're, they're not able to, to move and they're not able to feel good. They feel bad. They're, uh, it's like they're, they're stuck and there's nowhere for them to go. 
But if we will exercise our spiritual muscles, get in God's Word, and begin to exercise and flex our spiritual muscles. I was going to flex, but I was afraid these sleeves would fall off. <clears throat> um, the, the, the thing about it is if we, if we will flex our spiritual muscles by getting into God's Word, you see, a lot of times Christians are unhappy. Christians are dissatisfied. Christians are miserable for one reason. They're not doing the thing they were called to do in the first place. And that is not some ministry. That is get on your face before God every morning. That's why people get miserable. That's why saints come to church and sit and soak and sour. Amen. Because whenever God gives us vision, whenever he gives us a heart to do something, we need to do it with everything in us. We need to say yes to his will, yes to his word, yes to his functions in the body. He's yes, yes, God, what are you saying to me? I want to do those things. And so he's with you. He goes before you. He's already there before you ever get there. Can you say a good hallelujah? Amen. He goes before us. In other words, your future is looking pretty good. Because once you get there, God's there. Oh, man, a lot of people are fearful and fretful and worried about the future. What am I going to do about this, that, or the other? I guarantee you one thing. Whether you have the this, that, or the other, you're going into the future regardless. <laughs> you're, you are on a crash course. Your destiny is headed straight down future road. And so you better get in line with God's word. You better get on board with what he's doing and just say, Yay, God, I'm hanging on for the ride. It may be longer than eight seconds, like in the PBR world. Amen. That, they call that the hardest eight seconds in the whole world. And I can assure you that's true because when I was a kid, I rode those little steers. Now, I wasn't old enough to ride the big bulls, but I'd ride those steers. And I never could hardly stay on the full eight seconds. I don't know if you've ever grabbed a little steer and tried to ride one of them before, but I'm going to tell you, it ain't easy. Oh, my goodness. Those things twist every which way. They get to going in so many ways you can't figure it out. You can't keep up. That's the reason I don't do it today. Well, that and other reasons. But that's why I don't do it today is I just couldn't keep up. I got thrown off and stomped in the back too many times. I was like, you know, I may not be the sharpest tool in the shed, but I know I'm not getting back on that thing again. And so, but, but here's the deal. If God says, get on and ride, there's not going to be that kind of twist and turn that you have no uh, ability to understand. God's going to give you the ability to know what he's doing in the future. God goes before you. Secondly, God, it says here, look at this. He's the one who goes before you and he will be with you. Everybody say, God is with you point at the other person this time, you. God is with you. He's already in your future because he goes before you. But now it says he is with you. In other words, he is a present God. He is a now God. He's an on-time God. There's not a single thing that you're going through today that he doesn't know and he's not cognizant of or he's not aware of. He sees it, he knows it, and he is vitally concerned and vitally involved in it. You may say, well, then if that's the case, why am I going through this stuff? I don't know. Why don't you ask him that? Don't go on Facebook and Google it and talk to a million other people who are unbelievers. Get in his word. What is God saying to you about your present circumstances? What does God's word say about your present situation? You may think um, sometimes that that you're just alone in this fight, but I'm going to tell you something. God fights every battle right along beside you. God is with you. And number three, number three, we'll be done here in just a moment. He's the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you. Say this out loud. God will not abandon me. Say it again. God will not abandon me. One of the greatest issues that I find in a lot of people's lives is the fact that they feel that somehow 
God has, uh, I've heard several different words, abandoned, betrayed, left. Uh, you know, if, if my situation, uh, you know, why me and all that kind of stuff. And uh, listen, I'm a human. I, I understand that thought process. So I, I can completely understand it. But God's word is clear. He never leaves us, nor does he forsake us. He doesn't leave us, nor does he forsake us. So God never abandons us. He never abandons us. He has, in fact, Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And the Holy Spirit is the guarantee on the inside of us that he's still with us. You know, you can sense on the inside of your spirit, man, that there's something tugging you forward to your eternal goal. Something tugging you forward to your eternal home. You know that the Holy Spirit is inside of you, that he's working with you, that he's dealing with you. You know that God is alive and well on the inside of you if you're a true believer in Christ. The problem is, is a lot of people are not true believers in Christ. They talk about being a believer. They talk about, they think believing means a mental game. But believing does not mean a mental game. Believing, I can tell you what you believe if you'll let me watch your actions for a few days. Mm hmm. I don't care what you say, but if I watch what you do, I can tell you what you actually believe. And you know I'm telling you the truth. So the Holy Spirit is inside of you, if you're a born again believer, to push you forward and to, to help you and make you excel. What has happened with some of our uh, uh, students here in this church is they said, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and get a hold of God's word. I am going to do the, the best possible thing that I can in the place that I am to hear from God. And so God is opening doors for them to understand the word more, to be more involved in what God is doing. But he says here, he'll never leave you nor forsake you. To leave is one thing, but to be forsaken is another. I often think about um, here a while back, in fact, I was riding my, my wife and I were riding our, my motorcycle down the road yesterday afternoon. It was kind of a nice evening, so we decided to ride down by Lake Levon. And there's a little uh, cove that uh, used to, I love to go there and fish. It was just kind of a hidden place. You could go in there and not a lot of people ever went in there and I could get up in there and nobody knew I was there and I could just fish off the back of my truck right out in a nice little, there's a little uh, tributary running into it and, and all of that. And uh, I, I drove by it yesterday and I haven't been there in years to that particular place to fish. And there's a reason why. And I mentioned it to my wife as we were driving by. I said, you know, that's where I used to go and fish a lot. Just, you know, when I was just wanting to get away by myself or something, I wanted to go and fish there a lot because it was quiet. I said, I don't do that anymore. She said, why not? And I said, well, you remember about seven or eight years ago, there was a grandmother that got so distraught in her mind and her daughter had had a baby and they were just, her, her mental state had just deteriorated. And I'm not blaming these people. I'm just saying this is what had happened. Her mental state had deteriorated, and she had gone really, really off the rails. And she brought that little baby there to where that co, because it is isolated. And that's where they found that little baby. Um, and it wasn't uh, alive. And so it's hard for me to go back to that place. It's hard for me to go back there to to, to fish or to have any kind of tranquil thoughts because that's what I think about. It's one thing to be left. It's another thing to be forsaken. That grandmother left that baby there. But God saw that baby. God saw that baby. God saw that baby. That baby's with him. That baby's safe now. But uh, we, we, have no, uh, we have no reason to fear that God will leave us or forsake us. Because even if we depart this world, we're going to meet with him in the air. The Apostle Paul said, for me to leave this present body means I will be with him in the air. I'll be present with Christ when I leave this body. So thank God he will never leave me nor forsake me. 
Now, guys, if you'll come and help me this morning. Here's the last phrase. It says, he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Now listen to me carefully, church. Here's the last phrase. Do not fear. Do not fear. Everybody say, do not fear. Do not be dismayed. Do not be dismayed. Do not fear. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. The Bible says, God has not given us a spirit of fear. Fear can actually be or become a demonic oppression, a demonic spirit to where you have you, you can barely function. I know people who can't walk out of their house because they're fearful of walking out of the door. I know people who can't get on a highway because they're fearful that if they get on the highway, something horrible will happen. I know people who uh, th- there's many, many things they will not or cannot do simply because fear is impeding them. And I'm saying to you today, God said, don't fear do not fear. He said, I'm, I'm going to be before you. I'm going to go with you. I'm present with you. I'm not going to leave you or forsake you. So go on and do whatever it is that I'm calling you to do. Go ahead. Don't be fearful. Don't let fear rule your life. Don't let fear run a real good life for you. Don't let fear run a real good life for you. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Fear is a, it's a, it's a grave digger. It just, it eats at you. It's something that grinds on you all the time. So don't let it happen. God gives us a way out. In fact, his word says, perfect love casts out all fear. And then it says, this is where I want to end. Do not fear, nor be dismayed. The word dismayed, here is an interesting Hebrew word. If I say to you, don't be dismayed, you don't have, don't answer. But when you hear the word dismayed, can you give me a working definition of that word? Most people can't because it sounds like discouragement. It sounds like disappointment. It sounds like something with the word dis in front of it overwhelmed, all this kind of stuff. That's, that's what we think of. But the Hebrew word is so much more graphic. The Hebrew word for this word is so graphic. Here's what the word dismayed means in the original text. It means to be broken. To be broken. To be broken. To be crushed. To be confused to be beaten down. God was telling Joshua through his mentor Moses, he was saying, you're going to go into that land. I promise you all these good things, but I guarantee you one thing, son. There's going to come a day when you're going to feel like you are a broken man. You're going to feel like you are crushed. You are going to feel like you are uh, have been beaten down. These people, they're going to, there's going to be all kinds of, 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 uh, of uh, disappointments and all kinds of discouragement and skirmishes internally and even externally. And those things will come against you and it will break you down. But he said, do not fear because it's going to happen, but don't fear it. And some of you in this room right now, you are in this place of dismay. You're beyond fear. You couldn't even hear me tell you this morning that God is with you because all you could think of was the broken and the crushed place in your life. That's all you could wrap your mind around. So when I said that God is for you or with you or he'll never leave you or he'll never abandon you, all you could say in your mind was, yeah, but I'm crushed. That is no way to live as a Christian. And I'm not telling you to pull up your own bootstraps and get over it. That's not what I'm telling you. But God himself says, in fact, if you read this verse in the King James Version, verse 8 says, and the Lord himself will go before you. 
the Lord himself will go before you. God personally will go before you. You do not have to fear and you do not have to be broken. You do not have to be crushed. You do not have to be confused or beaten down because the psalmist David, one guy that had been crushed and bruised and broken and all of those things, he wrote a song. And in that song, in Psalm 34, he said, the Lord is near to those who have a broken heart. Jesus himself when he preached his first message in Luke chapter 4 and verse 18, he said these words, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Hallelujah. Let's all stand this morning. So in face and in light, Of all of these things, church, I want to say to you, I want to say to you graduates, I want to say to everybody in this room, never, 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 never give in to the fear. Never give in to the broken place. Never give in to the people that would try to force you out of the best will that God has for you. Don't give in, don't give up, and don't give out. Can you say amen this morning? Glory to God. Give glory to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just a moment. I'm going to ask Bishop if he'll come down here to the front. And we're going to uh, hand these degrees to these young men. And uh, we're just excited about doing this this morning. Amen. All right, come. Let's go down here so that everybody can see. Isn't that a beautiful diploma? Amen. Christian Christian Life School of Theology. Praise the Lord. First candidate this morning, Sean Gunther. Give him a big hand. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It says Christian Life School of Theology. The Board of Directors of Christian Life School of Theology, upon the recommendation and approval of the faculty, hereby confirmed Sean Allen Gunther, the degree of Associate of Theology. God bless you. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. And now for our second one. All right, Jason, will you come forward? Give Jason a big hand this morning. Praise the Lord. The Board of Directors of Christian Life School of Theology on the recommendation and approval of the faculty hereby confer upon Jason Keith Lewis the degree of Associate of Theology. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. What a wonderful day. Amen. I'm going to ask Sean and Jason if they will. Y'all go back to the back door. There may be some people who want to shake your hand. We'll let you go first. And uh, God bless you guys. Praise the Lord. Well, God bless each and every one of you this morning. We are dismissed from this place, but not from God's presence. So go from here rejoicing in the power and the love of the Holy Spirit. All right? God bless you.